<laughs> Hello everybody, welcome to Live Feature Rant. I am your host, Legendary Neurotoxin. To my screen left is Adam12, and to my screen right is Tanlin. Um, both of these folks are awesome people in the community. You probably already know them and are familiar by now, and if you aren't, then I don't know where you've been. You know <laughs> But it, hey, uh, thanks for having me on, man. Absolutely. Nice to be here. Looking forward to it. Yeah. All right. So, um, you all already know who I am. So, I'm going to um, ask you, Adam, first to kind of introduce yourself. What's, uh, what, what's your kind of background with everything, with Landmark and MMOs and Builder Games and EQ Franchise and all that fun stuff. Just, uh, oh, so my, sort of a, how did I get bit by the MMO bug? Is that what we really, we really want to go down this rabbit hole? Okay. Well, yeah, if that's, if that's cool. the one you want to do, go for it. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so um, how did we end up at Landmark? Uh, really, it goes back to, for me, Star Wars Galaxies. And just right before that, I had dabbled with EverQuest Online Adventures in the PS2. And it was the first time I had ever been exposed to the idea of Oh, you see that mountain over there? Yeah, you can climb up on that mountain and, and then go beyond and see, you know, like it blew my mind. But obviously not the most optimal way to go about playing an MMO. So, yeah. you know, I fell off about two months in, but I thought to myself, when that Star Wars one comes out, that might be pretty cool. And uh, uh, I got into that game, and at that time... Uh, Are you talking game. about Star Wars Galaxies? Yeah, I, so okay. Star Wars Galaxies came out, I got into beta, um, I, I played through the beta, very, very late beta, like I got a weekend before they shut it down for the live game. I gotcha. Yeah, I got about a solid month, but you, you pretty much saw, I think, about the best of it. Yeah, so I got into the game, and for those who don't know, it was a game where they restricted you to one character per account. The idea was your one character was supposed to experience all the game had offered and they had a skill system in place where you know they had six basic professions that branched out into advanced professions depending on the skill points you spent and there was a cap on the skill points you could have and that in theory was going to balance you from exploiting combat weaknesses things like that yeah. turned out that was a nightmare uh, <laughs> it was something they were constantly chasing in the game uh, they were constantly trying to snuff out the flavor of the month Meanwhile, everyone's obsessed with this, oh, there's a Jedi slot you can unlock. Jedi is an alpha class. And, that, and so, uh, you know, the game went live. We had to run everywhere. There were no vehicles. There were no mounts. Uh, it, it was very hardcore in the old days. You know, it was, it, it, it was not a, a, a easy, player-friendly to learn game. I and agree. And for those who don't know, yeah, about a year and a half, uh, two years. Forgive me if my time frame's a little off, but it's been so long. Um, they decided because the game wasn't as popular as it should have been, uh, but a year and a half actually. I'll you know, get to that in a minute. Um, that they were going to completely change the game mechanics of the game. So just imagine you're playing a World of Warcraft tab targeting EverQuest style MMO, and now it's Planet Side Two. <laughs> that requires aiming, and you're like, I, I would enjoy what? that actually. Maybe I would have. Gone back but that's and, not the uh, game okay. people have been playing right. for a year and a half. That's not the game I was playing when I invested hundreds and hundreds. And, like to this day, I, I kid you not, I still have this knot in my shoulder. This thing that happened when I was trying to grind out the XP to unlock my Jedi slot. Uh, wow. I'm not kidding. Yeah. Um, it, to this day, it haunts me. <laughs> um, so I, but it, it offered things that I have never seen in a game since as far as, you know, people like to play, talk, you know, sandbox. This had a lot of the great sandbox elements that everybody is asking for, you know, player cities, depth in crafting, depth in uh, resource mining, things of that nature. And uh, it provided all of that. Sadly, nobody was playing the game. Um, <laughs> and it was missing content. It was a real real rind to level in that game and it took them a long long time to fix this what they called the new game experience it was a mess um, eventually they got around to adding content it you know it was never super phenomenal but it was adequate and some expansions were better than others etc etc 
Um, but there was a real good community on the server. I just landed in a good place. I love my character. I love my Jedi. They're, they're, like the moment I got to light a lightsaber in that game, man. Um, I would get bored occasionally, dabble in other stuff, you name it, I've tried it. You know, Matrix Online, I played on and off till the end, till that went away. Um, mediocre, great, you know, I've touched them all. World of Warcraft was never my flavor. I played till about level 25. Okay. Everybody and you played on a PvP server, I wasn't into that. I was getting ganked and griefed as soon as I hit contested area. Uh, maybe I hit the 30s. I think I may have hit the 30s, mid-30s, actually, now that I think about it. But it just wasn't for me. Um, eventually, um, I always found myself, uh, especially when... Um, so at this point, they launch a test server for EverQuest 2 called EverQuest Extended. Hmm. And it was to experiment with the notion of going free to play. It seemed to be working really well for Lord of the Rings Online. Uh, it seemed to you know, work well for, I forget who else at the time, oh, Dungeons and Dragons Online. It had saved them from going you know, dead. Um, and it apparently worked so well. We know last year they announced that you know, forever and more, their games will all be, you know, Sony Online Entertainment games will be free forever yeah. more to play. And, and they've really embraced it, and I think in a very positive, excellent way, to be totally yeah, honest with you. Yeah. Um, so, um, needless to say, I, you know, I have friends who are now lucky enough to be working over at Sony, um, uh, and um, I'm envious, I'm jealous, and he's, it's, he seems to be loving it. It's like the, I've been, so for me, as I'm watching what they talked about last year at Sony, Sony Live, that they wanted to engage the audience, of listening to the audience. Um, just previous to that, I had seen John Smedley do in an Ask Me Anything a very public apology for the whole new game experience and what they did. And like, we should have listened to you guys. We didn't listen to you guys. Because the whole community, the community manager at the time, Teagues, quit the job because they were ignored. Because she went to him when the players don't want this. And they're like, no, we're going to do it anyway. And, uh, so to have them go from that experience and having lived through it um, and been there and watched it and, you know, watch the as the Jedi thing changed and, you know, them trying to make it all work and, and, and people us telling them constantly along the way, like, no, we want this. No, that's not how we're going to do it to what they're doing now. Like they said tonight on, you know, on Landmark Live, they're engaging with us. They're working. You know, we I feel like we really are building a game with them, even if. Um, especially after tonight. I'm not a builder, a real good builder myself, very basic. You know, I, I, I may get there over time, but I'm not like the Builderati. You know, there's some really talented people out there that, you know, uh, are doing wonderful things. I'm, yeah. But I'm really fast. I'm just, I'm happy to be able to log in and, if anything, provide data as I run around the world. So I'm impressed by everything they said last year. And needless to say, I was blown away by the technical achievement of what they showed in EverQuest Next. And I'll be honest, when I got into uh, EverQuest 2 Extended at the time, it was a little grindy. And so, and, and there are parts of the game that are old and some parts that are new. And if you're trying to, you know, like, you know, the level, you know, like, you get so overwhelmed with what am I supposed to do? You know, but I love the fact that if you want to just explore the world and get into trouble, it was so rich in lore. You know, like, I was just blown yeah. away with the, you know, the, Right, the love right, and, right. and it made me a little mad because it was real clear that this was their goddamn baby and Star Wars Galaxies was like the red-headed stepchild to it. <laughs> well, Van like, Vanguard. Like, it was yeah, yeah. <laughs> TLC that that game, like the, <laughs> the devs in like the last three, four years of the game, like, they, they fixed it and they worked real hard with the players to make things awesome. So, let, you know, I want that known. Um, but a lot of people didn't get to experience that because they never came back after that game change. Um, so EverQuest 2, so I was kind of really excited to say, okay, now's a chance for me, because I kind of missed the EverQuest boat. Okay. Um, for me to get out on the ground level on what was clearly a real labor of love for this company, the best of what they're going to now offer. And I had hoped, and I still have hope, that they're gonna, and it, it appears this way so far, the, the upgrade system with crafting, um, the um, uh, oh the the way you place stuff in the world, the way you own it, um, all clearly 
lessons learned and information from what yeah. they did in Star Wars Galaxies. Totally. Right. So I have hopes that other elements from that game will make their way over here, but maybe we'll get to that later. Uh, my, my pitch for the entertainer skill set will save for later in the show. But, <laughs> nice. So that's why I got on. I couldn't afford Alpha. You know, I couldn't afford the, tra- uh, the, the Trailblazer pack myself right, personally. Right. So I, um, I ended up winning a Settler pack. I, I had decided oh, I'm going to buy the Settler pack uh, you know, when closed beta launched. Uh, the end of the week when I had gotten paid, you know, I was like, I'm going to do it. Uh, I had been watching people play, and I was like, yeah, I'm ready to jump in. And um, I ended up winning a uh, settler pack in Co Carnage's channel of all places. You know, uh, I dig them as a streamer is a lot of fun, and uh, they they were just all uh, balls to the walls giving away landmark that day, and I just happened to land one. So it was uh, it was awesome. It was it was you know, and I've been happy to be involved. And if even if that contribution is um, being a positive member of the community and um, providing data, you know what I mean? If it's that simple, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm happy to do that. But now that they're doing this new thing we'll talk about today, I'm really, uh, this is cool. I, this is the part where I get to participate and have some feedback and it, you know, be, be heard and be involved, you know. So Absolutely. anyway, that's, you know, that's it in a nutshell. You know, I dabble in other things I, I play uh, right now. I'm still, to this day, I'm very slow about it, but I always keep going back to it, EverQuest 2. <laughs> I'm still leveling my Fey Wizard. I do believe she is literally the smallest player character in the game. Nice. Uh, I'm not kidding. Uh, everyone who runs into her is like, why are you, you are so tiny. I've never seen anybody that tiny before. Tiny works um, really well. Yeah, you know, so it's a lot of fun. There's a tiny little fay just will drop a comet on your head and, you know, just kill you in one shot. It's pretty awesome. Uh, but I'm still leveling her. I hope to at least hit cap before EverQuest next hits. And uh, that's kind of brings me to here now. So that's my MMO story. All right. All right. So there's a couple Kitty of wanted out. Kitty yeah. was like sick of you talking. <laughs> so there's a couple of things I was going to say there real quick um before I pass it over to Tanlin for a moment. Um so you were talking about the free to play experience and actually there were a lot of companies that were spearheading that um Nexon had um taken over Wizards uh Maple Story and you know was getting that out there and Maple Story's been around for a long time it's been doing great but then even before that was Neopets and you know as as children's content and their you know really gougy prices and methods and stuff I actually I was an intern there and so that's why I, how I really learned about uh kind of the level of gouginess going into it but um they they uh they both kind of pioneered the free to play in a lot of big ways and really led to kind of a lot of where we're at now with things and the um you know even even trying to potentially get away from pay to win in some ways or you know in Nexon's case do pay to win and do it so well that you can you know sell you can you can you can sell an assault rifle for 30 bucks in a really crappy game with terrible net code knowing that a hundred people are going to buy it just because it's a new item you're only going to sell it for two weeks before it goes on like the official item list or whatever yeah yeah and that's that's just ridiculous like they can they can just keep throwing trash out there and now here's what i into money (laughs) here's what i had liked about what they did with everquest Mm -hmm. to extended was and at the time you know i had a little more extraneous money and i knew i was going to be hitting a period where uh finances were going to get a little tighter and I was taken enough with the game that I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy some clothes I like because they were basically selling appearance items. They were selling some mounts. Mm-hmm. They were selling backpacks, you know. And, um, you know, th- but they were like 20, 25 bucks. So I easily dropped like 150 bucks in the store. But I was able to deck my character out well enough that moving through the world in the early stages was nice without being ever given... Like here's an Uber weapon, you know what I mean? Like at least my character could look cool. You know, I was happy. I was happy to spend money on that. So for a free game, I dumped a ton of money on it, and they've never been pay to win. That's what I've liked about you know SOE. I get you. I get you. Yeah. I mean, it's ah, uh, it's it's a thing. <laughs> I yeah. Okay. Definitely one of the things I like about the way SOE is headed. 
Yeah. So actually, um, you know, the way it's headed, but at the same time, I understand, you know, thing, things aren't all uh, happy in... Um, what the heck is the lo world in uh, Vanguard? Is that Asgard or something? Uh, Talon. Talon. Okay. Yeah, yeah so... Um, Tenlin, you not only, you know, you, you and, um, uh, Kalest and, uh, Chewina and Flatus and Calbure do the, uh, Evercast show, and you guys have been, mm -hmm. the, the whole crew's been doing that basically since SOE Live, right? Uh, yeah, uh, since, uh, I think it was two weeks before SOE Live was when we did our first Evercast show, and it was, um, before we even knew about Landmark, um, because they hadn't, I mean, they told us about Everquest next or EverQuest Landmark at SOE Live, uh, kind of, it was really surprising to us. Um, but yeah, we, we started the uh, the two weeks or the week before SOE Live, and it was our prediction show, like what we were, we were going to talk about, like what is EverQuest Next going to be like? And not one of us had a clue about, uh, about Landmark. Um, uh, yeah. but, but before that, um, I uh, as you as you mentioned, I'm a, a Vanguard vet. Like that's the that was the first MMO that I got involved in um, deeply. Um, I knew about EverQuest and EverQuest Two and World of Warcraft because I had friends, and at the time my roommate was really into EverQuest. Um, but I, I, you know, my background I was a former Marine, and at that point in my life I was full active duty, and so I just didn't have the time to commit um, to that type of, of gameplay. I needed something a lot more casual. Um, but then I got out of the service, I started working with these guys, we started playing Vanguard, we were working graveyard shifts, so it was like we had nothing else to do, we were kind of separated um, from our social group, and so it was like we'd play Vanguard for hours upon hours during um, the day. Um, they stopped playing um, when Lord of the Rings Online came out. Um, I didn't want to play that game. I didn't really enjoy it, and I got involved in the crafting of Vanguard, and that's why you'll, oh, yeah. you'll hear me. You'll hear me just go on and on about the crafting in Vanguard. Um, but that is actually what hooked me more in MMOs than anything else because I um, I really enjoy the type of gameplay that does not involve killing things and taking their stuff. You know, when and when you give me those type of options that I can play the game without having to, you know, be to to resort to violence. That's what I'm all about. Um, the diplomacy mini game in Vanguard and the crafting game were just um, huge selling points to me. Um, but then, after a year of Vanguard, um, when there was like there's. The, the sad history of Vanguard is that after the first year, I mean, they added one raid it, and the population just went to, to nothing. Um, and I started dabbling around with a whole lot of other games. Um, I'd always come back to Vanguard, though. That was the one that I always went back to. Now, that, that one year mark, was that when WoW came out? No, no. Uh, WoW predated Vanguard by like a year and a half or two years. Oh. Um, I think that that World of Warcraft's um, first expansion came out right around the first the time that um, Vanguard came out, or the Burning Crusade, which is World of Warcraft's second expansion, came out before Vanguard. Um, and I know that Van it went like Vanguard, and then three months later, it was Lord of the Rings Online. So if anybody was still playing Warcraft, and then they came to join Vanguard, and then they didn't like Vanguard because it was not a very polished MMO at that point in time, m most times they either went back to Warcraft or they went to Lord of the Rings Online because there were, there were better options. Vanguard was not the polished game that those other games were. Um, but so, like I said, um, I I found out about EverQuest Next probably six months or so before SOE Live, and I was like, hmm, I'm really looking forward to what they're doing it because I want I want EverQuest Next to not just be the successor to EverQuest and EverQuest Two, right. but I also want it to be this the spiritual successor to Vanguard, like w you know, with the with the with the same creative forces involved. Like Jeff Butler worked on Vanguard, and now he's the creative di director of EverQuest Next. I'm like, I love the things about Vanguard, so maybe I'll see some of that in EverQuest Next. Um, and then you know this this whole landmark thing has really thrown me for a loop because it's exactly what I want. It's that non-combat gameplay, like you don't have to kill stuff and take kill things and take their stuff um, to play the game. Right. And, right. Um, so I'm all about that. And just like Adam had said, I'm not I'm not as good a builder as I'd like to be, as I see other people be. And this this announcement, you know, that hey, we're going to be involved in the creative process with the style guides. That's 
that's huge to me because I get to be my you know like a little apprentice developer and if I have good ideas um, they can gain momentum because I, I'll, I you know I can put them out there and say hey this is what I think yeah and yeah absolutely very cool very cool yeah I'm I'm really excited about it now you so you were saying you really weren't like sure what the heck landmark was even after they 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 showed it off at landmark or at uh, SOE live no because it, because at the time it was i mean we, we it just caught us right out of out of left field like we had not prepared for that at all like we figured that there would be player housing in the game because vanguard and eq2 both have player housing in them so why would you make a successor to the to those two games if not you know actual successors but spiritual successors why would you do that and not have player housing but we didn't think it would be player housing like this where you got you know just pull all of that stuff in and and uh, make it however you want it you know this well that's is just what blew my mind just recently with one of the recent polls when they came out and said yeah we're gonna let you not only you guys build in the world we're gonna kinda let you build whatever you want in not you know in EverQuest next um, it, it was I was like wow that seemed kinda bold but you know at the same time if they're building the world with enough space that you know, they're you know, people build areas will be away from quest areas, I suspect. But yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, this is player housing on a whole nother level for sure, for sure. And and I I still feel through the the live streams that they're doing and um, the the landmark live that I'm learning more about landmark every week. Um, not not in what because. I mean, we're learning about the potential of what they're of what they can give us, and that's just like, oh, well, if they give us these tools, these are the things that we can do with it. And until they tell us that we can give you those tools, it's like, wow, we don't even know about what all we can do yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think they're being, they're, you know, I really get the impression that they're equally as surprised at at how much they want to do with the players. You know, like they're everyone's upping their game along the way the players mm -hmm. and the development team and uh, yeah it, it's uh, the synergy is really great to be honest with you I'm really impressed so far absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. I'm really I'm really excited for um, you know what's coming up okay so I'm just gonna cover a little quick list of yeah, what uh, what we're gonna kind of be talking about what was talked about earlier today um, and also, oh, man. we got some uh, player creations. To oh, talk. yeah, we've got some awesome uh, yeah. stuff. And two other things I want to say right before that, though. One, if you took the crafting system from Vanguard but made it slightly less painful and the material variation of Star Wars Galaxies and you put that in EverQuest Next, like, I would be the happiest person ever because that's that's really what I would be looking for that level of material variety and variation. In fact, even in Landmark, I would rather actually probably have it we in Landmark first. We should probably explain that if, if we're going to okay. phrase it. We, um, so the, what happened in Galaxies was there were a variety of aluminums. There were a variety of steels, variety of water, wood, etc., etc. And you could manually harvest it, but the idea was you set harvesters that did it. Yeah. And what, what happened is... All, you know, for aluminum, for example, would have five or six stats that would go one to a thousand. The closer to one thousand, the better. And certain stats were more important in different, you know, like to be the best weaponsmith, you had to have been around or be able to buy uh, enough material that had spawned two years ago that had the best stats um, for that. You know what I mean? Like it, it turned, it really, 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 really brought a level of, um, um, customization and what you. I I with. use the term statsturbation in this case because that's <laughs> yeah, that's really kind of what it is. What, happened, what would be is that material would shift in, would be around for a random time frame. Could be just a couple of days. It could be a couple of weeks, and then would shift out and be replaced with something else. And the world would in generate the, the stats randomly. But here's the thing that that's yeah. really important is that it's the category of material. It's like. Your yeah. ferrous metal, which is going to be a metal that contains yeah. iron, so there's that one of those is going to cycle out, and you're going to get the next one. Both of them are suitable for making the uh, the frame of your your weapon, uh, exactly. but or whatever kind of melee weapon. But, th but this one with these properties will make it this much better. Exactly, It'll give you an extra experimentation point. Now, to be fair, we should give it to the other side. 
uh, Rave Starside is saying in the chat room, like he hated that about Star Wars Galaxy. It was really unfriendly to a lot of people, and I, you know, again, that brought me back to it was not new player friendly. No, um, it mm. was a, it was not new player friendly, and, and again, was where. Nerd. Where you it, had, in order to be able to play that game and understand what the hell you were doing, you had to go outside of the game and look for people who were doing guides and doing how-tos. And so, to be fair, maybe that was too hardcore. I don't know, but I did really like that feature about Star Wars Galaxies. Yeah. I can, I think right now what they're doing with Landmark, while clearly inspired by. Um, that, that the final step in crafting where you had multiple stats, you know, when you have five points to spend or ten points it was, uh, you know, I think in Star Wars Galaxies if you had everything lined up, that you can spend on these three substats, you know, like, you can tweak it the way you want. You know, yeah. That's, that it, like, they blew, I was like, grinning from ear to ear that it was <laughs> like, oh my god, this is exactly like the final step in crafting. So, I'm not sure. As much as you and I are praising it, I suspect, um, you know. I don't think it'll be that deep. They, they, they deep. want people to be able to approach it, you know, I without think... feeling like. So like to, I didn't like that about like Wildstar. I was in closed beta. I I attempted to try and wrap my head around the crafting, and it I was like, like it made my head explode, and I was like, I don't care, I don't care, and I just walked away. Um, so maybe there is too complex these days. Maybe I'm just getting old. I don't. Know. I I would say. <laughs> It could be watered down a little bit instead of 20 materials per category, do maybe um, four materials per tier, and those represent uh, one metal for each of the categories per tier. So, you know, maybe you just need some sort of cheap conductive whatever because you're just making rockets that you're going to fire or something. Okay, so use copper yeah. for the wiring. Yeah, if I you're, don't mean you know, subtracted. I am looking. See, I have here my <laughs> edition. Nice, nice. And I am. I have the the manual, and I'm looking. Maybe someone is watching from Zoe right now. Can tell me, did Jeff Butler work on Star Wars Galaxies? Because I'm trying. His name sounds awfully familiar. He um, might have. I don't know. I know he he was part of EQ One. I think. I don't know. I know he was part of Anchor. <laughs> That's. All right. Well, anyway, so I, I'm trying to figure out. It's here in the bookcase somewhere, and I'm trying to figure out where it is so I can sure. grab it, check it. But yeah, I'm listening. Sure, sure, sure. So, um, yeah, why don't, why don't why don't you explain a little bit about the Vanguard crafting system too? Because that that was that's the other half of kind of what we're talking about here. The Vanguard's mm -hmm. crafting system. Uh, first off, major time sink um, because you. In order to get it's a better, class. It's it, it's it, a it, class. It's a class. But yeah, <laughs> it, it was its own sphere of the game. Um, it had just as much um, complexity to it as you would expect from an adventuring class. And when I say that, I mean that you had you had stats on your clothing gear, and you had certain builds. Like you could build that you were a troubleshooting craftsman, or you could build like you were a finesse craftsman, and yeah. and, and 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 those were legitimate. You know. Um, strategies that you can employ to increase you, what you felt was your best chance to get a successful craft because the more successful you were in your crafting the more experience you got the faster you went up in levels um, and that's um, so those are some characteristics about crafting that I really liked about Vanguard one that what you how you set yourself up determined if you were successful or not um, so there was a and the element of randomness could be overcome so that if you wanted a better piece of gear you could do it um, utilizing your strategy and get it uh, better um, but where it has a disadvantage compared to what I'm, I'm, I understand about Star Wars Galaxies is that there wasn't a lot of experimentation in that once you once as a crafter you learned how to make you know a certain thing you realize that there was a pattern like this yeah. is, I can I can make this item and it has this stats on it and I, I can upgrade it once um, and after it's upgraded, that's it. It is the, it is what it is. And um, yep. I can I can see where where like they've added to landmark. That actually is pretty impressive that 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 you can do that sort of thing. Like you make your base item and you have different um, upgrade paths available to you. What I don't like about it is there is no chance of of failure. Um, and you have you you can upgrade it, but you don't get to. Until they add in the, the extra systems, which they've talked about, we don't know exactly how much you can augment your chance of getting a better item or not. Yeah. 
All right. So uh, let me just update. Uh, no, Jeff Butler. I'm clearly I was uh, may have been medicated at the time. I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, yeah, uh, it, it was someone someone else completely different, irrelevant to the conversation. Thank you, chat room. I appreciate you looking that up. Uh, yeah, no, a, what they're doing here may be like the perfect balance. I'm, I, you know, I suspect that getting the materials is going to be far more hair raising and adventure in the near future. Um, that it's, it'll uh, be a group it thing. being just a basic material that doesn't have stats probably won't bother us all that much you know we're, we're actively engaged in mining it it would suck if you then you had to worry about on top of well is this even what I want this month you know what I mean so right. I, I, I think this maybe the, the keeping the best of the customization while not boring us with you know, minutia is it will make it more accessible uh, at the end of the day. That and again, this brings us back to this is why I was so fascinated and watching live with excitement and being blown away was um, they're going to bring 15 years of MMO experience. There's a reason I play DC Universe online. You know, I have an account there. There's a reason I play EverQuest 2. There's a reason. Um, gosh, what else? You know, I, I, I'm I'm interested in H1Z1, even though I'm a Care Bear and I'm I'm really not looking right? for a hard <laughs> player experience. So, but I'm still intrigued. I'm still intrigued. I'm going to give it a chance. I, I, they have me curious, um, and just utterly excited about being there on the ground floor for something that is going to be future proof in a lot of ways you know I mean I do believe I saw somebody working with an Oculus Rift set on their head yeah. in one of their teaser introduction videos so mm -hmm. um, you know getting in on the ground level before the ground level getting in as we're building the ground level um, and being there beyond for years to come in a game that's going to be around for 10, 15, 20, who knows how many years. Um, that's going to be awesome. So, yay. And I, I trust that they're going to bring, a, you know, like I said, they're going to bear to, to fruit all of that experience yeah. and make something that I think, you know, I mean, everyone, I know a lot of times I hear it a lot in chat. You know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an older gamer. Um, uh, and I hear it from younger gamers. I definitely do see a bit of a generation thing happening these days. Um, that they always want to credit World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft is like, no, guys, it really was <laughs> like EverQuest, and you know, that really paved the way. You know, I mean, and, and I know the real nerds want to credit. Oh, what's the other one there? Ultima Online. Online. Ultima Online did have amazing sandbox features to it too. It had a lot of a lot great of housing, things, but not a real full 3D immersive right. MMO experience that we come to know and love today. Well, and it broke the mold. It was it also UO was a different experience. If UO Absolutely. came out like five years later and was full oh. 3D but still had the same themes and mechanisms, mm -hmm. it still would have been considered a different kind of MMO because just Absolutely. like the brutality of it for one thing like you don't have you're not that much tougher than other people um of course five years later it also have better net code so you wouldn't be in the treasure room of a dungeon with like two or three of your buddies and all of a sudden a portal opens 20 pks run through full enchanted black armor with halberds and deadly whatever they just take everyone out loot the entire place and run back through their portal back to their little lair that was totally a thing that i experienced and that was in like the first few months i only played it for about six months yeah i, I, I hear what you're saying i hear what you're saying but really at the end of the day and i hate to sound like a fanboy about this but um again sony online entertainment has been doing it for 15 plus years now, yeah almost went on 16 years Without interruption, with constant evolution, they're going. We're going to get something groundbreaking in in next. I just hope they're going to give questing the rich love it deserves. I know everyone's talking. I want sandbox. I want sandbox too, but I do want content to do as a PVE player. You know, I do want my sandbox stuff too, but I do want them to weave me a great story, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with that. You know. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I've got a list of things here to go over, and you know we've we've already been going for about forty minutes here, which is awesome. And <laughs> you know that's I I'm totally down with that. It's um it's been great talking with you guys because honestly I don't get to talk to you guys all that much, uh, especially in this depth. And um, both of you have not only a great background with SOE but a great background with uh, MMOs in general. So. 
It's been uh, uh, really a lot of good stuff to talk about. One other thing. Um, I've set up all of my stream donations. If you want to hear a fancy tune from the success music for one of the games I made and have me bore myself a little bit of this, you can um, hit the donation button below and, um, and I will accommodate as such. Um, now then. The medals. Medals are uh, coming through. More, pretty much all the stuff that we have for iron, we're going to have for all the medals. That's going to be awesome. Potentially more. Um, yep. Caves. Caves is coming, not caves. this week, but next week. They're only putting I in... I have a strange feeling I'm going to be one of the five affected. You know... I'm sitting <laughs> in a spot that is prime real estate to have a cave draw. I'm like okay. right on a mountain perch that like the base of almost looks too perfect to not be turned into a cave entrance. So well, I, we'll see know, what happens. They, they'll, they'll just send the giant earthworm through the world and see where it procedurally puts them down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's all, it's all how it likes to eat the seed, the, the procedural seed there. And, uh, that's it. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> roll the dice, take your chances. <laughs> It'd be funny if it actually, if one of them is actually on one of the, um, the gates. So they actually have to delay the, um, the launch of the servers to refactor where the um, where the hub is on that location. Mm, gotcha. You're right. <laughs> that, yeah, that would be our site saying that uh, they said five islands. They said maybe an impact. Five. So. Yeah, about five. Five Claims cave. No, five cave entrances will be added per island. About okay, approximately. That's right. Yeah. Now so they've cool. also said caves are going to have a large radius. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to eat one claim. It might eat multiple claims in a large true. radius. And I don't. I'm not too worried about that. It'll, no, no, neither am I. You know. I mean, hey, if I gotta move my claim, well, I'll move my claim. I'm not gonna cry about it. It's it, fine. It's, it, it's beta. Especially <laughs> how they changed. Um, how they said that they were changing the way that it's gonna template things up, and then like if your claim gets wiped out for whatever reason, like um, the not paying your upkeep, and then the caves generating and wiping out your claim, that they're gonna change the way that you can put that template back down. And I can see that as, as a positive step to make, you know, the, the um, player life better. Like if you accidentally forget and your claim gets wiped out, that anything they can do to make it easier to get that thing put back down and where, you know, you can start working on it again, that's great. Yeah, I just went through that. I uh, was watching a super fancy unicorn stream and some people were talking about needing a voxel board that I, I happen to have. Mm. So they came to my property, come check it out. And... Um, while adding permission, somebody was having a real hard time with lag. I get that they were probably on a low-end system, and so they never fully loaded in, and so the permission bugged out, and I couldn't remove them. So I was like, well, I'm not going to leave this up, you know, uh, as nice as the person may have been to, you know. So I picked the building up and then put it back down. You know, that, that spot next to my... You were there the other day, Neuro, I think. It was like, a, yeah, I have the crafting outpost. The spot right next to it mm -hmm. is a whole underground bunker that's got a bunch of swap meat stuff in it. <laughs> and um, I had to replace that whole thing. And it just, I tried and tried and tried <laughs> to get it right back where it was. And it did not quite, I had to do a bit of fixing. That's once rough. It went back in. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, of course, as soon as I spend literally like a whole night doing that, they say, oh, yeah, in the next patch, we're going to fix that. Like, ah, <laughs> all right, fine, fine. <laughs> well, it makes sense. Like, let it let it snap to the edges and let you then right, right. push yeah. it from there rather than try to yeah. paste this template. And then it's like, OK, now try to center it or something. Good luck. And, yeah. and, and with that going, it, it, with that in mind, I've gotten into the habit of um, making my claim like flat and building up the random terrain with my voxels instead of like the, 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 the with, with the zero voxels that are created out of the terrain so that when I do need to put it down, like my ground is already in place so right. that I'm, so that when I put my template down, it's like I own the land underneath my template too so that it looks like the way I want it to. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. Oh yeah, and being able to swap them out. Yeah, that's going to be fantastic. It's going to be great. Yeah, for sure. So, uh continuing down the list real quick before we go back to metal. Uh they showed off some of the landmarks of Landmark. They sh they said they're going to be doing a um uh they're putting the screenshots of that on the forum so you can find those on the Landmark forum. They've talked about they're going to do a document the demystifying document to <laughs> codify all of the um, 
uh, the the voxel techniques that exist out there, which Ooh. is great. I mean, we need something a we to do, uh, right? so everybody's on the same know, page about what to call stuff, what yeah, what to I call understand. things, and to end the the arguments about which uh, negative nano micro <laughs> anti putty etc. Yeah. Virgin voxel that you're going to... Macro, gonna, micro. Yeah. yeah gonna, uh, you know, zero voxel. There, there, yeah. there, there are definitely specific phrases that refer to specific things, and then there's yeah. definitely things that, like, some people don't necessarily know what they mean, and the, their their usage is kind of spread about. So it's yeah. definitely, um, you know, something that's going to be really nice for um, here moving forward because it also means they acknowledge all of these things and they can start building them into the tools. Right. Uh, so yeah. It is it is painful to spot one little pip and make sure that you're right next to it in the right spot when you're placing the next one, and then you know if the next one's up here. That's that that gets really really awkward. So um, further features, I still think a um, uh, a 3D modeling style interface where it actually gives me X Y and Z and you know sizes and spaces and all of that would mm -hmm. be a lot easier where I can just do a text input because text is not uh, fallible in the same way. It's precise. <laughs> yeah. Math math is good. Math does things. <laughs> um, so we talked a little bit about the uh, the workshop style guide stuff, and we'll uh, we'll definitely have to talk about that more because that's really going to be awesome. Getting um, the entire community together on dark elves. Now, I really wish that they had explained ahead of time that you know what the whole process was going to be because maybe I would have voted dwarf I voted dark elf because you know I don't know what's going on I know we don't have enough stuff to do dwarves any justice but um, you know dark elves go ahead they can be the guinea pig race and you know appease the fanboys I totally don't care yeah, yeah. I, um, I voted <laughs> dark elf to be contrarian and I, <laughs> felt, and I did that before the, the landmark live and then I saw Brassie's, like, you know, plead in character, you know, in her voice, and her dwarf voice. If you guys don't know, Brassie actually does dress up like a dwarf. Yeah, she like, has. The beard and the whole thing. Oh, well, last year she, she was a dwarf go, Max, too. She did she a goes, TR uh, Max dwarf. Um, it's awesome. After I saw that, I felt bad, and I really wanted to take my vote back. So I am sorry, Brassie. I am really, really, really sorry. Um, it's just brass, so, by the way. The e just silent. brass. It is just brass. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just I, I felt bad. So anyway, we're on Dark Elves. Cool. Um, yeah, I think this is the, the style guide stuff is going to be awesome. Can I just say, I want to throw out there, somebody has to write a plot twist into a quest where so, you get to like pick up an NPC and impale them on some dark elf. Ooh, stuff. yeah, that'd be nice. Because <laughs> that stuff's just begging for a moment like that. Like a big, you know, like I'm normally not a violent guy, but like I saw those that imagery with the furniture and the jokes they were making and I went, yeah, that'd be a good plot point. Well, I'd always said with those chairs, they'd make a better weapon than a comfortable place to sit. Like <laughs> now, now that now that they've shown the concept art, we can see definitively. Like I, before they actually showed the chairs, like in the concept art, I was taking a little AFK break and I was thinking to myself, "Gee, no wonder that's where those damn chairs come from. Those are freaking dark elf." And then I come back and I see the image. Like, yeah, I called it. Go me. <laughs> but that's um that's that's really cool. I'm I'm glad that and that's really interesting because that means a lot of what we see in the game was probably EQN um kind of test props and stuff that they're like, well, oh, let's yeah. put them in landmark. Yeah. Oh, that's what I, that, when I looked at them. That's what I was thinking too. Like this looks like it has a little bit more style than you would consider for like a generic. This is like a generic table prop that we're putting in the game, so that they have a table prop that they can use. It's like this looks a little bit more specific. And I was, you know, wondering to myself, I wonder what this prop is for or where it's from because it looks a little bit more specific. Yeah. It, yo, no. Ab I mean, totally. I mean, that's. I mean, they kind of say it. They kind of bring that up, but. Yeah, you know, right now they're getting, you know, like the way we're moving through the world, the way inventory works, the way those things happen, um, all of that stuff is data and information for what they're going to do in, in next. Everything that's happening here is totally contributing to what they're doing over there, you know, like, oh, for sure, you know, like I said, just, you know, being involved in playing what they need. 
Right, and and we've speculated on the Evercast show about like they're even. I think that they're even using like some experimentation with H one Z one to see how they can apply oh, yeah. that to, to EverQuest next. Because they said that the the zombies are going to have an AI, and what better place to test your AI than with zombies in a shooter game, right? Well, zombies zombies in a static world is a lot different than zombies in a procedural voxel world. That's the reason I believe why combat has been delayed so long, and even static combat, uh, static mobs rather that don't move around, why it's been delayed so long is because pathing through and around a building is one of the most difficult things you can do for an AI in a procedural world. Um, uh, Fruit, the creator of 3089, I actually uh, had a little interview with him, and I've been kind of following his, uh, his stuff. One of the things that he put in was a... Um, these really awesome dungeon-like encounters in uh, in 3089, where you go in the bottom, you clear all the floors all the way up, and there's a different color dude at the bottom who's the boss. And you you win that, and you get some special skill points and some other accommodations. Um, but I I've never been able to get my dudes that I recruit to follow me in and follow me all the way up, or even get through the fr the front door and get up the first ramp. And he, he admits that, yeah, even though it's a simple design, the the AI to have them follow a procedural pathway and be able to, to you know navigate that terrain is incredibly difficult. So the the kind of good with that, or the good and the bad, I should say, is while I can't have my buddies necessarily br come with me, that means I can escape into a building and have the AI kind of just work its way off that it can't really attack me but at the same time that also means you know if if i actually want stuff to be intelligent you know smarter than just a zombie yeah. um it's it's actually going to need to have a much more complex set oh, of well, um you know and that's like that's that's also, what they've been working on yeah and also there is going to be a more structured crafted environment like mm -hmm. they may let parts of the world sort of procedurally generate but they're going to shape and tweak and do what they have to to present what they want to for the Norath they're envisioning. You know, it's not going to be, I mean, there's still going to be a lot of artistry on their part to present, you know, the static parts of the game. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. I, I you know, yeah, I think this is going to, I'm sure it's going to, I'm, you know, I don't know. I, I'm really looking well, forward to seeing how AI gets injected into the game and how it evolves because this will be a learning. I've never done anything like this before. I've never done any coding or gaming. And so it's fascinating to be involved with that. So, you know, uh, we'll, you know, we'll talk, you know, talk about that in a couple of weeks when we have a chance to touch yeah. it and play it and, and see how that's working. And I guess the, but, um, the one other thing for me is the idea that players aren't the only ones who are going to have heroic movement. Interesting. Oh man, can you imagine being chased like by like a really clever orc? Yes. Yeah. Like I mean, I don't know about you guys, but like what I've been doing is trying to get really good at never touching the ground. Ground, right? right. <laughs> And, like, by the time Next comes out, I'm sure it's going to feel similar, or um, if not identical. Can you imagine being chased by AI that's going to be able to keep up with you? Yes, that's and it's cool. going to be very interesting to see. You know, that's, that's a lot of pathing to have to deal with. And, you know, yeah. to be able to compensate, I imagine, like, the, the lion chasing the, uh, the, I don't know, small, whatever smaller, more agile creature it chases, where the creature is able to cut so quickly that the lion has to basically overshoot and compensate to um, to be able to stay on it. So that's kind of what or, I see. Or maybe is, you you know you can outrun them. Obviously, I mean, there's going to be an aggro range. I, the, yeah. That's the thing with the story bricks AI. No, no. There isn't a, a like a spawn no, point right. they're that gonna they're going to be tied you. to. If you come around and kill other buddies, they're going to remember that. Uh, the, right. Well, they're also yeah. not tied to a den. They'll follow you as long as they feel it is uh, profitable or you know worthwhile yeah. for them to do it. Mm -hmm. If it's a predator and they're hungry, there's a lot you're, of you're, there's you're a lot in of trouble. Promise. I'm very nervous <laughs> about how, yeah, th right. this is going to execute. But the, right. the, and, and with that same... Know, the yeah. same story bricks, story bricks, you know, AI thing, you know, like if they've been given like a a they desire to, to defend and then put as this defense, 
you know, this location, they might not want to chase you as far away from this place that they've been, you know, given this, uh, you know, emotion that I want to defend this location. So if you go running away from it, they might not chase you at all. They might not just, you know, like scurry you away. Yeah, it's true. It's yeah. true. So that's, um, yeah, that'll so, be a lot of fun because yeah. that, that's, you know, it'll be actually trying to learn and interact with AIs, even hostile ones in a way that you wouldn't normally. Normally it's like, I attack you or you're going to attack me or we're going to stay a certain distance apart. Now I think they're actually going to have better potential spotting and be like, hey, I see you in the distance, you know, and potentially approach or stay where they're at and just kind of observe and uh, or go back and call their buddies, depending on if that's what they're doing. They, You know, if they're just kind of passively um, going about their task, they're probably not going to notice you if you use the walk command and just kind of sneak right up on them. And that's something else I'm really excited for is, you know, that that level of variation that we're going to have in um, uh, not just next, but in Landmark with the uh, the equipment that we have available. I'm sure there's yeah. going to be some sort of a stealth technique that's going to help for uh, oh, sneaking yeah. up on I stuff. I hope so, anyway. I mean, I'm, I'm, the promise I'm seeing is, yeah, as wide a variety as possible. I'm sure it will start simple, like, here you go, you got four magic spells. Have fun, you know, and okay, next <laughs> week, here's pistols. Right, it is kind of a trope in, in like, fantasy games that you have, like, a, a roguelike, thief-like yeah. class that has a stealth, and, and you know, we've seen variations on that, like Guild Wars 2, there's no perma-stealth. Like, you have abilities that will put you into stealth, but the, long, the most you can stretch out your abilities is, like, 20, 30 seconds. Um, and so, but I'm sure that there's going to be some way to do sneaking, you know, be a burglar. Be sneaking like a burglar, indeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure there's definitely going to be features for that, and I'm sure there's going to be ways that people can set up their scenario to actually be, um, you know, utilizing that, actually being able to set up light sources that if you get close enough, it'll put you in a, uh, a defined field that okay, it's, you know, you are in collision with this area, therefore you've been detected. That'll send a trigger to all the, you know, appropriate creatures or alarm, alarms or whatever in the area. And, you know, things things will proceed as they do. So people could actually set up a full, like, Metal Gear Solid style level where you actually have to sneak around and pay attention to where things are looking. Um, and, I, you know, I think that'd be awesome. Um... <laughs> So, let's roll it back a moment. The medals. Medals are coming soon. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I kind of figured that. Like, some of those panels look awfully empty. You know, and I yeah. didn't think that was by accident. I figured there was just more stuff coming. It didn't It didn't really surprise me. I was happy to hear it. Um, and I'm happy to hear, like, there's going to be, like, sharp edges and, you know, the stuff that's not going to blend. And, you know, that's all cool. Um, I, I and that's one of the things that I'm. I we that that like the that I hope that people start adding to the Wikipedia's and, and building the a knowledge da database about yeah. like what blends. You know, when you put two voxels next to together, sometimes they blend, sometimes they don't. And like when you're experimenting, it's like somebody should track this and be like, you know, these blend with these, and these don't blend with these. And it would be nice to have so that when you're when you're building, you can be aware. Like choosing the materials. Like I want these two to blend, so I'm going to choose this and this, and I don't want these two to blend, so I'm going to choose these other options. I think I've been asking for a blending index since alpha. Yeah, they, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm not on my current build, but on the on the previous one, it's like um, experimenting around, seeing what blends, because at some points I didn't want, and sometimes I did. All right. Uh, so that's great news. So that's yeah. a big, big. So move. that's and that's yeah. You know, one one of the things I was saying for like what we really need to be able to do dwarves justice, but beyond that, just to be able to do metal justice, I've been wanting to build with all the different metals in all the different ways, be able to work with them. They've got the different shine to them. They've got different you know characteristics. The fact that they blend and you know interweave perfectly if you've got two of the same pattern you're just basically swapping out one color for the other so people can do really amazing stuff where where metals are you know inlaid you've got a, a the plate of whatever metal and then just inside the edges of that plate you've got a different metal lining it or you've got um, the plates are lined with one metal and the interior is a different metal of course that's um 
they're also going to need to rescale all of the textures, and I hope that's going to be coming next week as well, because with the alpha to beta swap and the change that voxels are a little bit larger than they used to be, um, the scale of the textures is all off. They don't mm. fit one-to-one -one with the voxels properly anymore. So hopefully that's something that we'll be seeing. Devent, I agree about a rust texture. I, I also hope that um, uh, they're bringing down the road the ability to control which way the texture is going. That's completely different material. They've already yeah. said that, and I hope that's actually something they're going to be doing because the diagonal left and diagonal right for um, wood and for metal yeah. and all that stuff. Because yeah, that's things like stone. That's and, actually yeah. like I really envision a lot of um, sweeping, like forty-five degree connecting to um, you know various different angles and different areas for gates and such on. Dwarven and Elven and many other races' architecture, to be perfectly honest. So being able to have those diagonals in both directions really makes sense. Only having one direction for the diagonals, it's kind of okay if you're only limiting people to use wood in certain ways, but uh, ultimately it seems like you should be able to have both because being able to have two edges meet, two triangular edges meet in a really um, uh, neat way or having that, like, you know, Using, using that as a pattern for like a roof or something, that's a really effective um, you know thing that we can only do if we actually have both types of materials. And uh, I guess the other thing is um, the um, what's it called? It's not even the the planks, but just the uh, diagonal wood non-plank versions would also be really nice to be able to do that with. Once yeah. again, same purpose. A lot of people doing. Um, docks and stuff where they just want variation from one plank to the next yes mm -hmm. yeah I, I that's why I, the only two materials i've really built in are stone and marble because they, they the way they kind of it, it just the the way they design those it bleeds a little bit but it matches beautifully like it does a yeah. real nice job of yeah of fitting with it you know so i've tried to do some stuff with wood and i'm like that doesn't look right and that doesn't look right and i i didn't have the patience for it myself but uh um, yeah, I'm looking, you know, I, I definitely look forward to seeing that next week. Um, can we talk about the landmarks of Landmark? Yes, let's talk about the landmarks of Landmark. I want to talk about that. I was super impressed at the variety of what they chose. Yeah. The sense of humor, beauty, fun, dramatic interesting it the, the, it was very cool it, i was like i i, I was in kudos to, i'm sorry i don't remember names right now and i you know i'll go look again at the images later but um yeah each and every one of them i, I was not like why do they pick that blown <laughs> away by them all yeah for Agreed. sure yeah um and i thought that i had you know seen enough of them that i was gonna you know oh yep i've seen that one before oh yeah that, that was they, a shoe in and there it is yeah. and you didn't, right yeah. but then they pulled out some that i had never even heard about and so that what that tells me though is that, that that there are people out there that are building in landmark that aren't on the same social media that i'm on right or they're not tweeting or or they're not posting the forums it's just like they're just they're, just, they're building they're just trying stuff they're using the tools right. being artistic they're having fun they're doing whatever they're doing, and they're not on the radar for whatever reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what was uh, I? I really the one I saw the most that I was just like, ah, oh, I can't wait to go see that in game was the the white castle looking with the really high arches and the lights in them. I, it was almost all white, and that was stunning. I thought that was beautiful. I want to check out the Opera House. Um, oh, yes, and, and thank you, the Opera House. The perfect place where we could implement entertainer skills. Yes. There would be somewhere to go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Right. Yeah, and, the and, opera house was beautiful. Yeah, and and that's how I, I tell I tell this to, to people all the time. Is like you don't need to put in an RP server in your MMO because if you have an MMO, the RPers will make their own RP server. If you don't make one, it, you can't stop them. That's what they do. That's what they play the game <laughs> for. And yeah. it's like if you like you put that opera house somewhere in the game, they will come to it. They'll be like, oh yeah, we're well, we're gonna have you know we're gonna put on a play you know in game or something yeah. like that. We're gonna use the emotes that we have available and and those are things that are just gonna organically happen. And so that's why. I was really happy to see like you know a functional space you know this space has a purpose behind it and so that you know you can go it and and have fun there 
Um, yep. So the Opera House is definitely number one, and then number two, I think, was the uh, the Cathedral, and I forget the name that they actually named something Abbey um, yeah. was the other one, and that's um, because I just have an appreciation for that type of architecture with the flying buttresses, and I want to see like, you know, do they do they appreciate the architecture the same way I do? Hmm. Like, if I had the talent and the skill and the time, would I build something like that and be like, yes? I feel like yeah. I saw a really early version of that one, like just um, you know, it, the the very early planning stages of it. There's definitely the clock and the. Um, uh, uh, the one from Voidlust were two that I've seen on Castles and Crap Shacks that I can remember. I might have seen some of the other ones too. I really can't remember off the top of my head. The sphere I have seen is the build one. Something and then take it down. Yeah. yeah. Um, I came across once, and if somebody knows what I'm talking about, please like hit me up on Twitter or something and let me know. Um, uh, I came across someone who was sculpt in the middle of sculpting, off in the corner of the map, trying to like lay low clearly of a woman pushing open a mountain under you know, like it it was awesome yeah and i went i i went back like three times to see how it was progressing and on like the third time it was gone they quit landmark uh, and it timed out or yeah whatever. i got never got to see how she finished it or he finished it or whoever was making it, it and i was like i get it now i get why the islands are small they want us to be server hopping they want us to be wandering around and it really is a lot of fun to get lost in the world and i'm gonna I, again nice variety um <laughs> there's some stuff i'm hoping to see i'm hoping people thought of i had some great ideas but not the talent to execute them um that i'm hoping maybe someone else got the same idea so um great job so far i'm looking forward to i, I yeah they did a great job of balancing you know art talent fun you know just wow factor uh the, that beer that beer was hysterical yes right? <laughs> you know and i was like well they have they soe loves like, beer they get it you know like there's no reason not to the world's supposed to be like you know this hodgepodge of of all these different influences and you know that's the only yeah. drink that could have done it that that's yeah. you know you couldn't a, a martini wouldn't have done it a margarita yeah. wouldn't have done it, even if you can get the salt to look real good. Yep. A, a glass of wine wouldn't have done it. Because, A, it doesn't have the same kind of character as this giant landmark stein with the foam, you know, pouring over the, the edge. Like, that's just such a nice touch. Yeah. But, I mean, the other thing is, I, 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 know, I know they love other types of alcohol there, but I know they love their beer. They really love their beer at SOE. They do seem to like Oh, alcohol, my you know, for, for goodness. For folks that live in California, the land of very <laughs> liberal medical marijuana they sure seem to love their alcohol well they're also in san diego which is one of the hubs of this craft true. brewing in true. the I world i want to call out in the chat room it does seem the popular choice with a lot of the people here was the q the alien q the borg the, yeah. or they call it the, the tech q the tech borg. yes that would be the not borg <laughs> Right, that right. would be the technical mm -hmm. term, the not Borg cube. Uh, yeah, that seemed to be a real popular one with folks in the chat room. I, I, I liked it. Um, I thought it was well executed. But again, it's like like they they were pointing out. It's like you knew. I have seen this. I've seen this somewhere before. Where have I seen it for? It's like, oh yeah. Uh -huh. You know, it it looked like the shape of a Borg cube, but it looked like the exterior of the first Death Star. To be perfectly honest, that's more what it yeah, reminded right, me of. Yeah. yeah. Fusing our two, fusing two sci-fi loves into one great taste. There you go. Works they, pretty they well. Out, yeah. Some the next one will have a yeah. little out of the corner. I like that really abstract <laughs> one. I mean, I liked them all. Let me let me be honest. They were all really cool. With that abstract geometry thing statue that was floating there in the middle of the mm -hmm. base. That was awesome. That was so cool. So yeah, you know, like I said, it's a nice variety and mix and. I mean, you still have to know what the hell you're doing in order yes. to make something that's gonna, you know. I hope there are people. I, you know, I heard, I, you know, I've heard people say, and I've seen it. You know, I, I went to art, art school for a little while, and I have friends who were artists, and it is hard for people to wrap their head around maybe that you just don't have the eye for what looks good. It just some people don't. And right, and that's why I I, um, I pointed out on the Ever last Evercast show, like the difference between my mom and I, right, is that she doesn't have like the technical like like I am like when I'm messing around with the tools, I technically know what I'm doing, but her vision 
of what she wants to make is so much more clear than what mine is. So that, that given enough time, she will achieve her vision just because she has a better understanding of what that vision is. And she will learn along the way to get the result she's trying to get. It's how people learn how to use Photoshop or how people teach themselves how to use, oh, Nero, what are you teaching yourself to use right now? Unity. You Unity. You know, you're teaching yourself Unity. You know, I mean, people will, you know, self-educate themselves to learn how to do it if they really want to do it. Now, what, you know, Iklithid is saying in the chat room was, what was discouraging was people's responses of, I should quit playing because I'll never build anything close to that. I hope those folks remember that the game's not always going to be about that. You know, like, the building's supposed to be fun. Right now they're doing some competitions. And for folks that, you know, have that talent, this is their time. When the adventure comes out, when the looting comes out, when the design, you know, your own PvP arena type tools come out, you know, you could build a great, you could build the most exciting PvP claim in history and it not be the prettiest thing ever. But if it's fun to play, guess what? People will come and play it. You know, like there, there are going to be many other opportunities in this game to shine as a member of the community if it's you know even if it is like they're not retweeting your screenshot of your art bippy you know you know of your kitty or something yeah you know uh because you know i mean gold star for trying but you know we're not in kindergarten anymore you know like i mean right now is their time to shine there's gonna be plenty of other things to contribute into the game world i mean my plan is, you know, I built a very basic structure, but it is the beginning of something that I know I will expand and build upon and add to as the game goes on for years to come. It's just where I need to put my stuff for right now, but I want to at least make it look like something that invited people that went by it to go build on it. And it's worked. I've had a lot of people come by and be like, thank you so much. This was awesome. I'm glad I was able to, you know, craft here at your outpost, you know. Um, we're going to have the opportunity to do other things in the game. And, you know, I, I just, I, it, some folks are going to get that way. Some folks will rage quit because right now it, it's the only element in the game that's really, really there is mining and building. And so, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not doing one, you're doing the other. And the minimal. And if you're not really the, good at that, you know, oh well, you know. There's also the minimal crafting system. And it's, it's, you know, coming along. We're seeing yeah. more of it. But I think when we start seeing. Uh, hopefully the caves will start introducing some of the items even before combat comes in. Yeah. Some of the uh, the more diverse items that we're going to start seeing from and that's the other and thing, stuff. folks. Remember, we we all bought in or won in whatever the case may be into a closed beta. You know, like you you, you know understand what you are involved in, and if you're not into the idea of long stretches of all right, well, you know, like I'm there right now at this moment not a lot for me to do because I'm not a Builderati myself that, all right, I've got my crafting stations. Everything mm -hmm. I need is upgraded. I've got like a legendary pick. I've got a legendary axe. I should whip out a legend. Now letting it know there's not going to be a wipe for a while anyway. I should I work, be working on a legendary pulverizer. I just haven't been in the mood to mine, you know. But the minute this patch comes in, hey, it's something new for me to do and I'll jump in and play it. So I just people who may watch this after the fact and whatnot, you know, it's like it's okay to walk off for a couple of weeks and come back. You know, I mean, you know, if if that's what closed beta is about, it's you know, understand what you bought into. You didn't buy into something that's you know in open beta and essentially soft launched. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and that's like people are saying in the uh, in the channel in the Twitch channel, and I, I'm completely on board with that. Um, just because I can't sing like Sinatra doesn't mean I should stop singing. I, yeah. You know, just just because I'm not the best doesn't mean I'm not going to enjoy what I do do. And I think that. You know, like that's I, I have some ideas and I want to contribute and like maybe if I can't execute it, maybe I can be like, well, you know, I'll you know I'll do what I can do and I'd be like, if hey, if you guys like this idea, can you you know take it, do whatever you want with it because um, this is what I have fun doing. And I, I, I feel know, like right now there's also like we no, only go have go ahead, go ahead. one context to building and that's decorative. I was the, just gonna say the, I love decorating, but, and I want more. I want you to rain props on me, but Rosie. The, please, <laughs> just okay. rain props on but me. That, that's that, what actually got me to build. Was oh, I have a door that works. I should put that in something. 
And okay. that's how I ended up building what I ended up building because well, you know there were props to play with. So yeah, I love decorating. There's the other type of building that we don't have yet. Well, there's actually two types. One is um, building towards fully scripted content, and then there's one that's just building towards a combat arena. Mm -hmm. Maybe some people they're not really building that much, or the stuff they build kind of looks a little boxy and a little thick because they're specifically you know anticipating this is going to be my landmark version of an unreal arena or a uh, red faction arena where the the land is destructible and you know oh yeah i'm making everything thick because i don't know how much hit points everything's going to be hit points per material if that's actually you know, going to be a I thing you know all of that stuff envisioned turret cannons on my crafting <laughs> outpost at one point yeah uh, I, you know i'm not confirming or denying You'll have to come by and find out. Oh, I have an entire three-story claim that I want to put engines on and just fly around as a vehicle. I don't know if we're going to get that as a <laughs> the feature, but you yeah. know, it's I, and, you know, want to do it. Right, and and like we were talking about raining props, is like I know that that part of what I'm waiting for on my claim, it, because I know that they're going to add these these props in eventually, right? Like I need broad leaves. Like you just give me broad leaves, and I will start creating with them. But I'm waiting for them to be put in the <laughs> <laughs> and if you've been to my claim, you know, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Like, yes, and, yes, and, yes. Um, um, but that isn't going to, you know, that isn't, yeah, I, I, I will keep I will keep building at my own pace. And when they put in those props, there'll be like, I'll be, you know, working feverishly like, oh, they've given me what I need. I'm going to go and build now with it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. If, exactly. Any, if anybody so, has, yeah, and then you know, that's it. how I've been decorating. Like, I only need four bookcases right now. They're done. All right. I'll wait for more stuff to put in. Mm -hmm. But I'm not just. I know there's a world of people who like to build stuff out of props. It was very popular in Star Wars Galaxies. I was never a fan of it myself, but you know, it was never something I got into. And that's what people are doing here. It's it's clever, but. My idea of building is I'm going to work on the structure and I will let the props do the propping. You know, I, you know, eventually I'm going to be able to sit in this chair. So I'm going to leave this chair here for right now. And when I can sit in it, it will be an awesome place to sit in my chair. You know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Tanlin's place is pretty awesome, by the way. It's He's just doing this entire, like, fungus and trees and stuff only. So... Nice. Check it out. It's well, I, I eventually gave up. I started working with some voxels up high up in the air, and I'm using all the different tree props that they've given us to make it look like there's a a branch structure that's creating a secondary platform above the ground level. Um, and so, again, that's why I've, I'm, I'm waiting for broad leaves, because broad leaves just make a nicer floor than than basically dirt dirt or like wood that you've had to shape in weird different ways yeah yeah mm -hmm. i can agree with you there okay so you know metal metals are going to be awesome we we've, we've talked about materials here a little bit um all all of what we're kind of looking forward to is um stuff a lot of people in the community have been looking forward to mm -hmm. so we uh we already talked about caves uh we talked about the landmarks of landmark um Oh, um, before we talk about the workshop, um, yeah, workshop. Before yes, before we talk cool. about that, there's actually one special thing, and I don't know how it's going to impact live feature rant, so it's going to be a little bit of an interesting episode. Now, I should probably state it now. Next week, I don't know what the timing's going to be. It's going to be a two-hour show, but it's going to be starting after the workshop show which is going to be starting after landmark live where okay. they're specifically going over what's going on with the workshop and um you know the updates with that and um giving us more feedback and answering questions about it and stuff so that's going to be really awesome but like i said i don't know how it's going to impact this show they aren't even 100 percent sure how they're going to do the timing themselves so next week is going to be a little interesting and then the week after that I'm going to be at E3. I'm not really going to be able to do the show. There so, um, I'll see if I can get some exclusive information or uh, sign an NDA and get exclusive information that I can't talk about, but then mm -hmm. be really, really excited about and just, you know, not, uh, not talk about. <laughs> um, and um, then after that, I'm probably going to be looking to get some 
actual regulars on the show on top of uh, weekly guests. So it'll be probably looking to be a different format um, one way or the other uh, when things come back up in three weeks. So I uh, figured I should get that out there and I'll probably send out a tweet and put some sort of message to that extent because... E3 is going to be impacting a bunch of my shows. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, yeah. I think E3 is going to be impacting everybody and everything. If you're someone who's a new Twitch streamer and you want to build an audience real quick, during E3 might be a really good time to do it. Just a thought. Yeah. Just a thought. Or really anybody. I mean, you know, yeah. if I yeah, had the tech it's... to do things live and at the show, I totally would. But Yeah, but know, bandwidth it's... is always so difficult. Like, it's not existent at those things. Yeah, it is. is. That is correct. Live. Yeah. Well, as, SOE Live, I think they might be able to um, fidget things a little bit differently. It's, I think, something that they know about. Planet Hollywood is probably aware of now, and hopefully they'll be able to uh, get, get their best tech minds on... Um, you know, the difference is sure also we, the number of people yeah. pounding on the bandwidth is significantly smaller at a at you know Soe Live than it is at E3. Oh right. Yes. You've got everybody and their cousin going down thinking they're going to be live streaming their whole <laughs> right, experience. Right. They got their tablet. They got their phone. They're like, okay, no. let me. You don't even get wired internet. You don't even get ground line <laughs> internet at no, E3. Yeah. Like L A L A. I am glad I live far enough away that. You know, my internet is not destroyed when mm. when E3 comes around. Because yeah. I'd wager, if you're really close to the Staples Center, you're probably not living loving life that much with the, uh, you know, everything. There's probably there's probably you know, w some some sort of like wireless radius that's just completely tapped out near the Staples I, I, Center. I used yeah. to have <laughs> season tickets to a professional sports team up in Seattle, and yeah, if you went to the game, like 60,000 people all sitting in one spot, you know, you've gotten, you know, you might send a text and an hour later it would actually get through. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what you do do if you're smart? What you do is you go down there, and of course, obviously, you know, you have enough interaction with the folks over at Sony Online Entertainment that you can line up interviews. Yeah. Go down, shoot video, come back. I expect you to share all that stuff with us fine fans. We will plan yeah. on it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's actually a good idea. I mean, it's really busy at E3, and I, mean, I already have a lot of contact with a lot of folks at uh, SOE. But being able to follow up with that and head down to San Diego, it's only a two-hour drive without traffic. So yeah. not really yeah, yeah. that far, and be able to go and interview people and talk about stuff, that'd be totally awesome. Honestly, I'd be really trying to get people on um, a live feature rant here, and then when Caves and Combat and all that stuff comes in, doing like a special episode of procedural powerhouses because once again this is a procedurally generated world so you know it's it's one of the best it's one of the best procedural sandboxes i play a lot of procedural sandboxes almost yeah. all of them are 2d I've and everybody no. everybody <laughs> says oh that game looks like terraria or yeah. <laughs> that game looks like terraria in space with some sort of hallucinogen involved and yeah. you're going to die that one's Edge of Space. Yeah. The other one I've been playing is Kriya, which actually has a beautiful crafting system. You'll craft things. They'll take the stats from the first time you crafted it and keep upgrading on those every time you upgrade, even through the different tiers. You can have a bow that shoots three arrows. You can have a bow that pierces through things. You can have a bow that... Uh, uh, I can't remember what the other effect was. Um, maybe it's that you're still mobile while you're able to use it and do some other stuff. But that's... Um, you know that's that's just bows that's you know one of the many kind of weapons and stuff there's all sorts of different um i think the other ones that does magic damage or something there's swords spears and uh wands as well and there's going to be plenty of other weapons and they each have their own intricate uh tr crafting tree wick i'm in a uh, slimy seamy valley mm -hmm. um so the um the, the the things I see in that really make me excited for EverQuest Next because I see a lot of EverQuest Next, not Landmark, well part of land, partially Landmark as well because it is a sandbox builder kind of game, but a lot of what I, I'm hoping to see in EverQuest Next because it has a full-on RPG system to it. There's a full attribute system, you do levels uh, as you do stuff, you get experience in it, you can invest it in different ways, you get better at things just as you do it anyway. There's uh, six different kind of um, 
areas where you can uh, develop. It's like crafting, arcane magic, which is um, damage spells, divine magic, which is protective spells, uh, combat, and harvesting. And he's looking to add um, like a mobility sort of thing so you can get double jumps and other sorts of stuff like that involved. Because right now, if you're stuck in an area, you're just building out with dirt. <laughs> That's that's like probably the one the only one kind of uh frustrating thing in the game right now. Fishing Fi yeah. uh, a spear has uh missing in games. Yeah, spears spears are awesome. I mean, there's a lot of variation to spears too. I mean, so when, when I think of spear, I think of everything from this, you know, long thin floppy thing with a little red tassel on the end that you'll see in like uh uh various eastern martial arts styles. And then I think of what um, uh, the, the I can't remember exactly who it was in Africa. One of the uh, the kind of tribal leaders was like, "Okay, you're gonna have a shaft that's this long and a blade that's this long, and yeah, it's gonna kind of function as a spear, but it's also gonna kind of function as like a sword with a really long you know stick on it." So the the length and breadth of what a spear is or a lance is another sort of thing that's it's got a very specific purpose you're not going to be running around with this you know encumbrance of a spear tucked under your arm trying to poke things with your whole body but at the same time um if you're you know if you're on horseback if you've got all the armor and everything yeah a lance is your best possible weapon you're just going to punch right through anything it's going to you know rip a bunch of people apart and then you just turn it the other way to get their bodies off of it. Yep. Um, Trident? Trident's another one. that has got, um, there's a lot of spears that actually have uh, forks not just for stabbing but also for trapping people, disarming, all sorts of stuff like that. Yeah, so you know, that's that level of variation I'd love to see with, um, you know, even in Landmark, if not in uh, Next as well. The other thing is though, with Next, those different variations of spear could be their own classes. They could actually have a cavalier kind of class where you're, you know, or cavalry or whatever. You're just, you're on the back of a, a whatever mount anytime you're using that class or your, uh, like all your abilities are locked except basic stuff. But when you're on it, you've got like super powerful weapons and stuff that you can use. That'd be totally, I could see that being um, valid in the game. Anyway. Yeah, no, um, you know, I, I, I wouldn't expect Landmark's combat to get more complex than, you know, okay, you chose the mage skill set, you drop that in your slot, here's your five abilities. Now mix that with your ground movement and your grapple. Have fun. You know, I, I, I don't think Landmark is going to end up, you know, being that level of crazy. You know, well, not not that the ideas are crazy. Maybe you know, in next they'll have a lot more variety with that. But I think landmark they're going to keep pretty basic. I think it's going to be more of these archetypal ideas that you install. You know, like we draw. You know, because we've got those missing slots right now. One of those is going to be a fur combat item. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it'll be like mm -hmm. here's your pistol. You you equipped a pistol. Now you're a pistolier, you know, or you know what I mean? It's okay. You you equip the flaming sword. Now you have five flaming sword abilities. Like, yeah, I don't think they're, you know, yeah, exactly. Like Wick is saying, they, but you know, the abilities are going to follow the equipment. You know, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. You know, I mean, I yeah. I think it's going to be more like DCUO though. That it's like a series of left click and right click combinations, and that defines what the weapon is capable of. And you're combining that with some other set of abilities. Because I said there's definitely stuff you're going to have to go out and learn and unlock. It's not all coming from yeah. your weapon. It's actually some from the weapon and some from stuff that you've learned out in the wild. Or, you know, from uh, from uh, scrolls or maybe tiers of stuff, potentially. So yeah. some th there might be some things that they are tied to weapons. But at the yeah, same time... Yeah, I mean, so, you know, I mean, you know, it, and then, the, you know, then it would be the best of both worlds. And you could take your idea of I want to, you know, or like the ideas in the chat room of a spear or a trident, you know, and say, all right, well, we've, you know, and we've developed this kind of combat style for this weapon, you know, and it completely changes how you choose to interact, you know. Um, yeah, combined with the grapple hook, yeah, folks are definitely, you know, going off on just some different crazy ideas, but, you yeah. know. I, and that's what I'm looking there. forward the to. Potential's there, but I would just expect that that kind of variety may not even be, like, we may only have half a dozen 
you know, combat styles, if that, you know, by the time this game goes into open beta. You know, a lot of those are things to add to the game down the road. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Now, that's another thing, though, with the um, the workshop. Not only yeah. are we going to be helping them design the aesthetic, we're helping them design the culture, which means we're helping design their combat style. Yeah. Now, Dark Elves, I just imagine, right. like, the tear doll from the, the books and how they move silently through everything and, like, you know, sh sharp shrubbery and everything. They just pass right through it like it's no big deal. Very quiet, um, really, really potent fighters. But yet, as I as I hear all of these accolades about them, I also, you know, in every encounter, they have losses. They, you know, they get encountered by whatever types of creatures, if it's Fixians, if it's Kobolds, if it's Drakes, whatever. They're always going to lose people. And that's the thing that I always wonder about is, well, they might, you know, the best of them might be that well-trained, but, you know, are they all that well-trained? Or is it that you learn, you know, you spend 15 years learning how to move silently and not smell bad, and then you get one year of weapons training and boom, you're a tiered all. Um, so, yeah. you know, that what, what their culture is, how they fight, what they use... Um, all the methods and techniques and the, the mentality of it if it's going to be based on some real world analogs like the Bushido code or something or if it's something that's completely made up or using um, I really hope you know, all of it is leveraging uh, EverQuest, Next, or Ever, EverQuest uh, 1 and 2 because once we eventually get to Ethernear interaction where we're interacting with content from EverQuest 1 and 2 it wouldn't make sense for them to be a decidedly different, like, completely out of whack, you know, race in comparison to the other two. So, you know, we'll have a little bit guiding us ahead of time, but, you know, not just the aesthetics, but everything about the culture is what we're going to be defining, and that's what's really yeah. exciting to me. Right. They, I think that they can take a page um, from what Avatar: The Last Airbender did for the for the anime, where they like the oh, different yeah. cultures. The different cultures, like they, I mean, they, they didn't even like say that it was this that we use this martial arts style to influence. They're like, no, this culture used this type of bending, and this is the martial arts that we styled their bending off of. You know, it was like you know, water bending was tai chi. It was like there was no like influence. It was that's what it was. Right. Um, and so, I mean, I think that they can take that page and be like, okay, so this is the, you know, this is the culture and this is the weapon they're using. So this is the type of forms that we would like to see and, and show it as an influence onto that culture. For sure. For sure. Well, so just hitting live right now via the internet, um, the Dark Elf Week 1 architecture style uh, roundtable vote is now open. Nice. Does our initial Dark Elf architecture style guide fit in with your ideas for Dark Elves? Yes, this is exactly how I want to see Dark Elves in EQ next. Mostly, but I have some minor tweaks I'd like to see. Somewhat, though I feel there are a few major revisions needed. And lastly, I have a very different direction in mind. Let's discuss. Yeah, so there you go. Go vote. Go vote now. <laughs> Could you uh, post a link in chat there? Sure, yeah. Absolutely. Cool. Am I going to get timed out for posting a link in your chat? <laughs> you know, that's a good point. <laughs> post it and see if you can. <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> nope. Nope. Okay, All there right. you go. Oh, okay. Everybody yeah, and, enjoy. And, and, yeah, I've been waiting to see these pictures. Um, like God, not, this is not the part I've been waiting stream. for. Yeah, dude, because I'm with you 100%. Dying for this. And, and you know the dark elves even aren't, aren't even my favorite race. Um, but, Same here. but but you know it's like when we see this style guide, we know that that's what you know. This is the the blueprint for the other style guides that they're going to have for the races that I do really like. And so it's like I'm all about going to jump into them and see how we're going to influence the game with like you know adding some creative input. So what race are you look guys looking forward to? That you're gonna get get a chance to see and then and give input. What's the race you're most waiting to get involved? I'm in? really looking forward to see what they do with Karens. Okay. Uh, like they they've already said that they've got a, like a custom emote for them. I don't know if every race will have it, and theirs is the most oh, distinct. Sure they will. But the uh, the licking their lips sort of thing, apparently with the Karen when when they do that, you know, big old tongue kind of lick, licking around their chops. And when I saw that, it's like, oh damn, I've got to go Karen. Because you know, what, I'll I'll be 
the very, very rare when I do it. When someone sees me licking my lips, they know I'm about to kill someone. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> yeah, okay, very obvious tell. Um, I will go. <laughs> um, I, I'm uh, Vanguard. The first um, character I ever played was a gnome, and so gnomes have a special place in my heart. Yeah. Um, not not the not the goofy gnome, but the the, the more the the tinkerer, the the you know always good natured gnome, you know. Yeah. Um, and then it was funny because in Vanguard, the gnomes and the dwarves were kill on sight with one another when the game first launched. Um, so, <laughs> it, so, so it took me years to get over this hatred for dwarves, but I've totally come around. Um, and dwarves is my are my second one. Um, because I see them as a the, the dwarves are the are the the race that like they have no problems when all you know like all of their houses down a row of streets are all exactly the same and if you're a little bit off of what they decide is this is what a dwarf house looks like they're like looking at you funny like fix your sh fix your stuff dude yeah uh, that was a mature rating you can say fix your shit Okay, fine. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. The, the, the dwarves are going to be the race that they're going to they're going to want uniformity and discipline. You know, that's when I think of that race. That's what I think of. Um, and then because I'm building a tree house, the the, the wood elves. Because I want my, I don't want to see. They shouldn't be building like buildings up in the trees that lo would look just as normal on the ground, right? Their right. tree houses yeah. should be should be like. It should like be going into an alien world. Like, wow, this kind is kind of all... like the elves in Lord of the Rings. You're like, it, it's otherworldly. Right, know? right, right. Well, like, that's that's the thing. It's like most most MMOs don't even have all the levels of like jungle canopy. This yeah. is probably one of the first games that I've seen that's even close to having that level True. of quality to it. So I want to see. I can't wait to see the new interpretation of the Fae. I, I know I'm probably in the minority, but I love playing my Fae. So no. I look. I hope that they decide. I, I apparently Faye did really well in their polls. So I'm not the only Faye lover in you know out there. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, you know, in the chat room, I'm seeing Ratanga, Iskar, all of them really, uh, the Vashir, Karen. So yeah, you know, everyone's got their favorites. I kind of, I'm kind of, I'm kind of with uh, Throckmorton. Really, all of them. You know, eventually. Yeah, right. but yeah my favorite. A little bit more for for the Fae. Uh, and if my my wife Kai Kai Lest was uh, here, she uh, I'm Dark Elf and Fae would be the two that she she goes yeah. on to the most. And I think that like if the Wood Elves have like a little bit like of that alien architecture, like the Fae should just be completely like um, they shouldn't have buildings at all. It should all be like plants and stuff that that are surrounding and creating their their home environment, their you know their sacred spaces. Well, in EQ2, they live in an acorn, so we're kind of halfway there hmm. already. Yeah, I've already seen some acorn houses, and actually an alpha. I, I live. She lived. Mine has oh. an acorn house in California. So. <laughs> nice, very cool. Okay, so now they talked a little bit about the um, the architecture having that kind of weapon-like shape to it, and. Yeah. You know the idea of nothing. I'm ever even going to remotely get close to thinking about building. So yes. Well, they're gonna. They're probably going to give us a lot of props for a lot of those things because yeah. a lot of it's. You know, sure you can do it with microvoxels, but you can't have the same. You generally can't have the same level of fidelity of like a flat blade tapering down and having a yeah. really complex, you know, arcing shape to it. So I imagine some of those blades that we see, those are just going to be a prop that we'll be able to line the walls with or put them anywhere. You can have them on, you know, doors making it look like those are the gateway that's letting you that's uh, keeping you out or whatever. Yeah. There's so many different ways making them smaller and using them on the furniture and the architecture, making something microvoxel appear um, you know, fully fully designed and and made in game. Now that's the thing though that uh on I think last week's episode or maybe the one before we we weren't 100% sure if they're going to let us get close and continue providing ideas for what's going to be in the game or if it's literally players with voxels using the props and materials they give us and all the tools and everything that we are actually making the final finished art pieces that are going to go into EverQuest next. And I think it's actually that. I think we're actually going to be making the f full final version 
and if the voxels aren't pretty enough for whatever reason they'll either have to adjust the tools to accommodate or give us props to accommodate yeah yeah you know i mean they're not going to let and again we, we got to re-emphasize want to really be clear about this the workshop is not about you being able to build something but yeah, they're going to ultimately build most of what is going to be the dark elf city you know whatever you know what however else however they play that out um you know they're going to or what the, you know ultimately what's going to happen is they're going to use these options like i think they did say this tonight if i unless i misheard they're going to use this as an opportunity to offer people jobs yeah probably you know? yeah for sure for sure uh they would be silly not to they really would be silly not to and I tell you, man, if you were someone who was just good at building and you had a chance to go, you know, go work with the folks over at Zoe, worst career moves you there are far worse things you could do with your career than that. <laughs> trust me. Trust yeah. me. So Yeah, it's gonna be exciting. I wouldn't sweat it too much. I suspect that that the focus is really gonna be on the conversation. Um, you know what I mean? And who knows? I mean, I'm sure there are gonna be artists out in the, out in the, you know, who are gonna be like, No, I think it should look like this and draw it oh. out. Oh, yeah. You know, like, well, it's going to be that interaction. It's going to be that interactive level. So, right, and that's what I'm looking at, right? Like, I'm not particularly a great artist. I'm not a particular great building, but I, I, I think that I have enough creativity in my myself that that if you give me a a, um, a picture, like I'm looking over here of the dark elf buildings, I can give you, I can give you an analysis. I can give you an opinion. I can, I can, I can clearly explain to you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. How you could make it better, like I, and the I'm, workshop. I don't mean to interrupt. I just want to let everyone know the workshop. Um, okay section is now officially live nice on the on their site yeah cool Let's thanks for the update the chat for you guys there you go um go ahead so Sorry. So, so so it's like anybody who can I, I mean the only prerequisite to in be involved in the workshop is to be able to find a way to convey your thought and if you're yeah. a better builder then you can build it if you're a better draw uh, a drawer <laughs> are you good at the there. drawing <laughs> right but if you're if you're a great artist, um, then you could then like maybe the the landmark tools are foreign to you, but you can take a look at what they've given you and be like, I can I can sketch something out and I can clearly communicate to to SOE what I think is good, and you can be involved in the communication or be involved so in the I conversation. Can, I just wanted to really drive home that point that right now it is not about being a builder; it is about just being registered in the forum, going into the forum, and getting involved. Um, you know, I, I know folks that like to shy away, but you know, right now, especially while we're in closed beta and people have at least some sort of bar to entry right now of either being picked with a you know, here's a seven day key or paying their way in, you know, you have to worry about the conversation. They're very good about keeping things under control, they're very good about making sure that everyone's voice is getting heard. And so, now is the time to do that, now is the time to get involved. Uh, because this is the time you are most going to be heard more than any other at this point. Absolutely. And this is actually, that's what they've said the entire time. You're a part of the dev team here. Mm -hmm. You're you're helping us. You're helping make this game here. So that's where, um, you know, they're really coming through with that. It's been a lot of kind of setting up again at this point. They've they've definitely taken our input on a lot of things up to this point. Hey, Uni. Um and oh, they, hey, yeah, uh they've they've taken a lot of um you know our feedback like on the lumber and the tree system and they're gonna keep on working through uh tree harvesting, um you know, pulling yeah. back burled wood before they finally redid the entire burled wood system. Um that was way back you, you know that was, that was I'm sure you saw a lot of people complaining about Pearl Wood and Alpha I did. so Yeah when I got in well <laughs> I I got in the first night of closed beta and very quickly I picked up on the you you were an old school unless you were around for Burled Wood. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. yeah, I remember that that's gonna be a joke till the day landmark dies. Trust yeah. Right, right. Oh, yeah. Some guy in general chat who's gonna be like, You don't know nothing. All right, you remember it was hard to get burned. <laughs> you know it. Well, now it's heartwood, so like whatever. Yeah. And if I can go on a little bit of tangent. Um, yeah, go ahead. I, I tweeted out earlier from my Twitter mm -hmm. that that I think that this is that that five years ago you couldn't do this, and and companies they wanted to keep a closed development, they wanted to yeah. keep everything secret, 
Um, because the, because the it bites them in the butt. People don't understand the development is flexible and things right. get pushed off. So they are definitely taking their share of hits by having this tact by being open in the development process. Right. But I, and I think that technology is also one of those things that, that are allowing for them to, to open up the development because like the limitations to doing an open development beforehand was that like how do you how do you adjust your message on the fly constantly and now people are internet savvy enough um you've got twitch streamers and and you know twitch is just blowing up in popularity um so they like hey even you, you know you can like somebody else already tweeted from the landmark channel like hey if you're doing a black elf, or a black elf a dark elf inspired um um stream i want to come watch you know mm. And they're, 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 I mean, that person out there isn't the only person. It's like you can do this open community development where we're all exploring ideas with one another and and growing it because the technology enables it to it. And you couldn't do it previously because there were there were limitations to how fast we could communicate ideas. I do want to give a shout out. Wick makes a very, very good point. There are only two game developers out there that I am sitting here in awe of. And so he is one of them. The other is CCP. Uh, the folks behind uh, Star Citizen. I would I would say <laughs> um, there's pretty much no no like, no CIG in, I'm sorry it's uh, CIG that's yeah that, CIG uh, not CCP. I apologize. There's, he was talking about Eve. I was thinking of uh, Star Citizen. I apologize. I I can think of like hundreds of kickstarters I would say are where I would say the biggest kickstarters for indies. Hey cat, you're going this way. Ugh. He, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, no, no, you're absolutely you're right. They're indies. I'm talking. I'm thinking of big. You're talking about triple A's. I mean, I'm that's talking that, about triple A developers, right? And now. that's There's the nobody thing. Nobody doing th what those two companies are doing right now. And to be fair, though, um, CIG and is you know the, the Star Citizen. They do have their own vision, but there is definitely a, a, a give and take and a back and forth with that. The, the people who are putting the money into making the game. So, but. Yeah, there are not a lot of AAA people. And now, do I think this will become more of the thing? Oh hell yeah! Oh, I, I already oh, noticed absolutely. that that, that uh, I am like I, I'm you know I follow a little bit of Warcraft development. They're currently in development of their next expansion, and I know more about their 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 next expansion than I've ever known before because their developers are on Twitter and they're like, hey. We have that. What do you think of this idea? You know, and like, hey, we're making these changes, and these are our reasons why. And they're posting it on their forum so that you can, like, if you want to, like, look at their discuss their 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 thought, and then the discussion that people are having in response to their thought. Like, you can weigh in, and they're 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 opening that door a little bit so that you yeah. can see behind the curtain and see like what they're thinking. Um, yeah. Well, they, you know, they need us invested, and they need us wanting to hang out and speak. Because at the end of the day, what so well, also with this, we're we're their business. They want you spending money on their game, and the in order to do that, you got to stick around long enough to spend money on their game. With Landmark, they also need us to teach them things that they didn't know because <laughs> voxels are a new technology. Well, again, and, you know the high you know. line will always come up with an answer quicker than just a handful of super bright you know people. Uh, like super fancy unicorn is saying in the chat room, the in the internet is magic. The trend toward more open development is great. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it brings people together in a way that we weren't in 10 years ago in gaming, you know? Yeah. And, and I would and say, like, um, oh, I also forgot Warframe. That's another company that's really yep, open far, about far enough, yeah. um, uh, that's Digital Extremes. It's yeah. really, really open about the development process. And they've been doing a great job. They've got weekly shows, they've got bi weekly shows. Um, just a fantastic job. They give out tons of codes and giveaways and stuff for everybody. So they've just been doing a great job building the brand and them do just an awesome game, like Can an awesome we name job building. A company the that's doing the outreach wrong. Oh, uh, can I call out like, a company that's doing it wrong? Like How EA or something, or you got a specific one in oh, mind? No, I got a specific <laughs> one. Try on with oh. Outreach. Yeah, that's just the wrong way to go about it. Yeah, like, we've already, I think we've already beat on Tryon for I'm RJH sure enough have, in previous that episodes was, here. In my opinion, like, <laughs> it's like, bad. Wow. It's wow. bad. I mean, really, 150 bucks to it's d it's spell, disgraceful you know, to, to proofread your text. It's Come just on. it's disgraceful. 
Yeah. It's, so I'm sorry. All right. Um, I, but another quick shout out um, to CCP because somebody mentioned it in the chat tunnel. One of the things did. that I, I love apologize. They, do, they they were very clear that CCP is very engaged with the player no, base. Right. Too, and so. one of the things I love that they ha- they they their 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 community that they've created like mirrors the game that they have. Right. So that there's the the Council of Interstellar Management or. It's, I forget what it is, but they have an elected player council. And so there's all that politics and intrigue that happen to elect players. And then they bring the players to, to Iceland during their, their fan fest to interact with the devs and, and get that player feedback. And I remember a couple years ago, there was a major falling out um, between the developers. There was like a, a document a, a, that got leaked to the populace and it was it was a pretty negative document, and and Eve or CCP said like, "Hey, that was not meant to be released to the public. That was our our internal thoughts. That wasn't what we were going to put in the game." Um, but because there was enough outcry, they're like, "Okay, we're going to get together your representatives, the people you elected, and we're going to bring them, and we're going to have a conversation with them about it, so that we can, you know, so that we can figure out what went wrong, how we can avoid having this go on in the future." And I thought that that was, you know. Props to CCP for a having that that action and two for reacting to a problem in with their game in a in a way that is respectful towards the players. Well, well that is that respects the players' thoughts. Um, now, Wick is making a point. He's like, wait, why is Tryon vilified for charging one fifty for a near complete game, but so he can charge one fifty? One hundred, well, not one fifty. So he isn't charging one fifty for Trailblazer X. They charged a hundred. Now here's the difference. The difference is you can get involved with Sony Online Entertainment and be involved in the development of the game. That's worth something. Uh, here's worth another thing: control. like, how you know, what what can players to proofread someone's you know translation? Come on, really? It and here's what folks really need to be worried about: is the fact that they're giving you all this stuff and it's seventy five dollars of in game credit, and it's like I would be really worried. If you could blow through seventy-five dollars in in-game credit that quickly, you know, like, you know what I mean? If there's seventy-five dollars uh, worth of stuff for you to blow your money on in the cash shop, I'd be a little concerned about that game. Is there any way that players can make money in Archage off other players in a legitimate way? If yeah. not, no, I mean, if they're, if they're, I, I mean, you know, you know I mean, if, if folks can afford the one fifty to get in and you know ride it out, great, but. It, it's yeah. you're not getting. I do not think 150 dollars worth of value out of that that situation. But yeah. you know, I mean, you know, you getting your money. I, I'll tell you, I am totally getting my money's worth 20 bucks. Oh yeah, I mean, and, for and me, believe me, I won my way in. I have spent money in the cash shop to buy yeah. it because I have been so impressed. And I was like, God damn, that's a cool jacket. I gotta have that. <laughs> so I was that's happy to give money. You know what I mean? Like because I me. wanted to reward them. So yeah. Go, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Neil. No, yeah. I, like, like um, my my wife and I were both gamers, and we have that disagreement. Like she loves buying all the accessories and the props and the 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 in-game items, the clothing and stuff. And I'm like, I'm not. Nope. <laughs> Can I make it in-game? I'll make it in-game. I'll make the money in-game to get it from another player because, yeah. um. Yeah, I, but, yeah. But, but I, I, I mean, hmm. Player I, Studio. I mean, the, the SOE <laughs> gave us enough for that, you know, that you know, sixty dollar, twenty dollar, hundred dollar investment. Yeah. Um, and I don't know enough about Arch Age or Tryon to really have an opinion. But I mean, if people are paying it, then I mean, clearly, yeah. I mean, what really what happened there with the Arch Age hype is they very strategically, and I watched this unfold. I was in the room when, like, you know, like, Co got, like, hey, we've got a new game for you to check out. I'll take it, you know, and I'll try it. I watched them very strategically select the biggest streamers around. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, so it would just rain Arch Age propaganda for weeks, and then, damn, if that didn't burn out real quick. Yeah. So what we got going on here with Landmark and what we bought our way into is a slow burn. You know, um, as time goes on, I have people who are like, well, is it, what is it right now? It's this. Is this EverQuest next? No. All right. Hit me up when it's EverQuest yeah. next. You know, like, but they're paying attention, you know, and, and, and like I said, it's going to be a slow burn. And the fact that, you know, you get to get involved and make a difference and help shape the game. 
So I'm praying that by the time EverQuest next goes live, there will be an entertainer skill set somewhere in the game. So <laughs> yeah, um, okay. I, I, seriously, I'm going to beat this drum. I am going until somebody from the company goes. All right, Adam, we've seen the post. We know. Mm-hmm. And, you know <laughs> yeah. that's all I want. I just want acknowledgement. They know. You know that's it. Right. So. Right. Right. I, right. And I, I feel the same way. Like um, when I did my, uh, I tweeted out to Rosie a picture of my of my treehouse. Right. And like. What I was really trying to say is like I need leaf props, I need more mushroom props, and like that's like all I just want is to like acknowledge that I need these things, and and that's pretty cool. Um, so, um, we're getting close to the end of the show here, so yeah. I'm gonna grab a couple of things while you guys kind of wrap up. The one thing I wanted to say on the subject, the the exact reason why I threw down a hundred dollars. Um, on day one for the Trailblazer is because I know I'm going to make at least a hundred dollars back over the course of the game so I'd rather be there from day one to help them develop the tools in such a way that it'll be really easy to work with really was out of my budget and it broke my heart I actually was out there begging on Twitter the night before like while there was the cutoff of being able to get the title yeah, you know, like I wanted the title. I was like, oh, the clothes are nice. Like I just want the clothes in the title. <laughs> yeah, and the yeah. bracer obviously will be useful too. But I was, yeah, but it just wasn't something I could afford in my budget. But again, I knew close beta. When I get in, I'll, it will be my opportunity to get involved. And the nice thing was, you can get involved without even playing the game. You know, you can hang out in the landmark live. You yeah. can post to the forums. You know, it is a completely open development, so you can get involved whether you're you're aggressively playing or not. You know, so. right, right, right. Yeah. So I'm going to be doing a contest now that I hit 500 followers, and then this is kind of a, a test for future contests. Congrats! This buddy. this first one, thank you very much, is a um, a contest for um, the settlers pack. Now they gave us a settlers pack for attending SOE Live last year, and I haven't given it out, so. Um, pretty much the contest, and I'm going to put out the details later, is going to be for somebody to make some sort of enjoyable content based on something from one of my shows, or a series of my shows. It could be anything from a beard montage from January to today. It could be uh, uh, all the times that I take a drink from the mug in like one giant <laughs> gif that like it, it just cycles through every time I drink is, is you know, some something hilarious. Now the reason why I'm saying it's a test is because I've got some more awesome stuff to give out. I've got another Nagafen hat hat to uh, to give away. Oh, I've I got will. this this front and back signed. Now not necessarily my one in the frame, but front and back signed um, uh, EverQuest Next and Landmark PC Gamer. Um, I've got one of those uh, to give away. Once again, not in the frame, but um, if someone wants to, you know, spend a couple hundred extra bucks if they actually win it, I could actually see about getting it framed. And then one other thing here, and I hope my cord's long enough to get there. I haven't even taken it out of the plastic yet. Um, Full-sized EQ poster signed by the team. Oh, got one nice. of these to give away as well. And this is as I get up to like a thousand and two thousand followers and eventually get subscription status or um, uh, partner status with Twitch. So it's going to be a bit of a build up to get there. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things the more that people get their friends involved and over here watching the show, I guess the better I can spread the word about the show too. Um, the more uh, people will be coming through and eventually get forward, get I think at 750 and 1000 is when I'm going to be doing the, um, um, what's it called, um, the two Trailblazer packs that I have. Oh, nice. I'm still on the lookout for a Trailblazer pack. I uh, need at least the clothes and the bracer. Gotcha. <laughs> <sighs> I keep entering. I keep losing. I keep entering. I keep yeah. losing. Thanks for noticing, Very Uni. Nice. Yes, yeah, they're yeah. Um, Uni's pointing out your awesome pants. They're the they're um, generic. Pants uh, are overrated. Hot sauce. Um, I agree with pajama with pants. I, I agree <laughs> with the unicorn. Pants are very overrated. My yeah. my uh, shirt was inspired by Omid. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, see. I noticed. That <laughs> both wear NASA. Shirt. Everybody, everybody's uh, teasing Dave because he loves uh, NASA. And, probably is like, oh, I wish I had more NASA swag. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. I, I heard that too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um that's that's pretty much it for the yeah, show again, here. Congratulations on 500, man. Thank, thank you very you. much. Congrats. And thank you for having me on when it happened. I'm yeah. so excited for you. I appreciate Actually, I it, I hit it a little bit earlier, oh, but Oh, well, well, well I pre This is I'm the first one I've had since then. <laughs> Still yeah. excited for you. Still uh, excited. Absolutely appreciate having both of you guys, Adam, Tanlin. You guys are mm -hmm. totally could, awesome. Could I make a quick announcement to the EverQuest community? Sure. I am going to be launching a new video show. Ooh, nice. Sony Online Entertainment related. So if you happen to play any Sony Online Entertainment games, you will probably find it mildly entertaining. So keep an eye out in the next couple of weeks. Very cool. Very mm -hmm. cool. Definitely keep us posted. Everyone see the ticker at the bottom. Follow on Twitter. Um, and actually, while I've got you here, um, Tanlin, I keep forgetting to ask. It, the Evercast show is keeping, keeping on, but was there also going to be something alternating um, in the other weeks, or is still no, still tentative? No, we're, we're still doing every other Sunday um, at um, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. This Sunday coming up is when we'll be doing our next show. Um, <laughs> me, personally, I, I occasionally stream Landmark. Um, when I get into EverQuest Next, you can expect that I'll be streaming that like two or three hours a night. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. Excellent. All right. So that's it for the show here. Uh, I am your host, Legendary Neurotoxin. Once again, to my screen left has been Adam12, and to my screen right has been Tanlin. Uh, and these two awesome folks you should find everywhere. Um, be watching out for that video series, and I'll see you in the uh, Evercast chat room on Sunday. Till then, um, I'll be around and uh, probably. Uh, probably having some fun playing some other games throughout the week but i will see you folks later Buh bye 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 bye